Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. Bigfoot Habituation in Miller County, Arkansas. I have followed sightings since 1976. That year I encountered a creature I believed didn't exist. The first incident I laughed off. My cousin came running into my bedroom one night and jumped into bed with me, saying something big just walked by the window. I lived in a community called Genoa. It is in Arkansas, not far from Fauk. A very rural community. We had a horse corral right behind our trailer, so I thought she had just seen a shadow from one of the three horses we owned. I just laughed at her and went back to sleep. The second incident happened late in Merite before school was out. I was in my bedroom studying for finals. My dad came to door of my bedroom and motioned for me to to be quiet and follow him. I followed him to his bedroom. He whispered to listen. Through the open window came a loud sound of maybe an elephant with respiratory problems. I spent a lot of time in the woods and bottoms and have never heard anything like that. My dad went to get his 357. He was a retired police officer and I had never seen him afraid. I begged him to not go out. He finally relented. A couple of nights later I had to go out in the middle of the night to feed a bowling calf. I was standing there feeding the calf and I noticed our horses standing up against a pine thicket that connected the corral to the pasture. I had the back porch light on and my eyes were adjusting to the darkness. I could see the reflection from the light. I counted sets of eyes. There should have been three, but there were four. One set was about a foot above the tallest horse's head. They were round and red. My eyes were still adjusting to the darkness, but I could see the outline of what looked like the shape of a huge person. I was in shock. We stood there eyes locked. It was maybe 20 feet from me. I popped the bottle out of the calf's mouth and back to the door. I never told my dad or anyone for years because the creature could have easily gotten to me and we came to an understanding. It protected our animals in exchange for the food it took from the horse feed and the garden. I always knew when they were gone because the coyotes would show up again. PC. Massive 9-foot shaggy Bigfoot up close on Vermont Road. I've lived in Vermont since I was 17 years old. I'd never heard of Bigfoot nor seen anything like it in my life. I've seen black bears stand on their hind feet, take a few steps, but always returning to their four-legged walk. I married my husband in 1967 and had three children from 1970 to 1972. There are only two lane roads in the state, except for the interstate I-89, which goes from I-91 to Massachusetts into I-89 and wins its way clear to Canada. We lived in Windsor, Vermont, centered next to the Connecticut River nestled against Mount Escutney. It's a truly beautiful place to live. The people are friendly even with their New England quirks. It's a place you bring up your children, let them walk to and from school, never had to lock your cars or houses, for everyone knew everybody for generations, but one year changed my life forever. You see my husband was a hunter. We drove to Richford, Vermont to his cousin's house, and he and his cousin would hunt buck or doe for the two weeks we stayed there. He knew every track an animal would leave and enjoyed the sport. So on that fateful afternoon coming back from Reading, Vermont, it was a typical day maybe 80, nice breeze. We were talking when I approached a long swinging corner. I had slowed a bit, but when I'd reached the straight there was an animal in the center of the road. I came to a stop just yards from it. We both thought it was a bear as it was hunched over with its back to us. I hummed the horn a couple of times, but to no avail, the creature continued doing its thing until it started standing up and up and up. It had to have been nine foot tall, maybe 800 pounds my husband said, reddish brown shaggy fur. Then it turned around. Neither of us could speak as it eyed us. It was very apparent that whatever it was, was intelligent. It was a male but the largest animal I'd ever seen close up, and my husband was as shocked as I was at the sight of the thing, not being disrespectful. It eyed us for maybe a minute or two looking directly into each of our eyes, then turned, took a step towards the side of the road, and one step it was on the grass, another step it was going into what the hunters called pucker brush, because it had thorns two inches long or better, and it made you pucker for the pain it inflicted. Then the animal was just gone. We sat there, I don't even know how long afterwards, but a car came up behind us, and I had to start moving. We didn't speak of it until the next day we were trying to wrap our minds around what we had witnessed. Years later I came across a book by Ivan Sanderson about a large humanoid animal named Sasquatch or Yeti or Bigfoot, and that's when I realized what we had seen.
I rushed home to show my husband what I had found, and from then on we watched the sides of the roads and looked in fields, but never saw the creature or others again. I'm truly thankful for what we saw that day as it made me realize that there is more to this world than we could ever imagine. We never told anyone about our encounter till years later feeling like no one would believe us anyway. SF Trailed by Bigfoot in Lamar County, Texas. I was born and raised in a little town west of Paris, Texas in Lamar County. While I was growing up I had heard a Bigfoot. It wasn't something I spent much time thinking about, but I would watch the documentaries with my two brothers. I guess I didn't actually consider it real. I had never seen one and didn't know anyone who had. So for me, it wasn't real. It was summer and my brothers and I were out of school. Just as we did every year we were spending as much time as we could at the lake. We had a trail behind our house that went straight through the woods to the local lake. The trail was about a mile long, but when you're a kid, it doesn't matter how far you have to walk, as long as you got to go swimming with your friends. My brothers and I were both good swimmers, so mom didn't worry about us too much. Occasionally she would drive over to the lake and check on us. But most of the time we were on our own. We would get there after our chores were done and stay until just about dark. Sometimes she would let my brother pitch a tent with their friends and spend the night at the lake. I was never allowed to do this because I was a girl, but that was okay with me. Mom and Dad would pitch a tent in the backyard for me and my friends. It was on a Friday and my brothers were setting up their tent by the lake. My friends and I had been swimming most of the day when my mom came by with a late lunch for us. She had picked up burgers from a local fast food place. I didn't really want anything so I had my soda while the boys ate their burgers. Afterwards, it was right back in the water. Mom yelled after me to start home before dark. I had walked home plenty of times without my brothers so tonight wouldn't be any different. The sun was starting to sink low in the sky and most of my friends had already left for the day. I knew I should be heading home too, but I chose to stay just a few more minutes and help my brothers gather firewood. I grabbed the bag that contained my uneaten cheeseburger and headed for the path in the woods. As I walked I began to feel more and more uneasy. I kept telling myself that there was no reason to feel this way. I had walked through here many times and a lot of them were alone after dark. I had gone about a quarter of the way when I heard a short snorting sound that I wasn't familiar with. I stopped to listen. I knew that wasn't a deer. I stood there silently, but the woods were quiet. Actually, they were a bit too quiet. Usually, there was the sound of frogs and crickets with it being this close to the water, but tonight they didn't make a sound. I started to walk again, but this time a little faster. I kept scolding myself for being afraid. This time, as I walked I heard a deep grunt. It stopped me dead in my tracks. There was something in the woods with me. I had no clue what was out here with me, but I knew it wasn't normal. I kept hearing my mom's words, get home before it gets dark. Now I was really wishing I had listened. As I began to walk I thought I could hear footsteps. The steps seemed to be matched up with my own. I needed to stop and listen but to stop walking was the last thing I wanted to do. I finally took a deep breath and stopped. I heard it, three more steps right after mine. I was sure of it. Someone was in the woods with me. Had someone been watching us at the lake today? I was absolutely terrified. It was all I could do to keep myself from breaking into a full run. For a split second, I thought about going back, but I was now about halfway, so it would be best to just keep heading home. Then I wondered if anyone would hear me if I screamed. I heard a low grunt and started walking again. I needed to get closer to home. If I got closer to the house they may hear me if I started screaming. I pictured mom in the kitchen cooking dinner with her radio tuned to a country station and her singing along. Dad would be in the living room with the news on. The central air would be whirring along. They would not hear me no matter how loud I screamed. I continued my fast walk with my heart beating in my ears. My sweaty hand clutched the bag tightly that contained my uneaten lunch. I had forgotten all about it until I felt the cramp in my fingers. The footsteps had begun again just as I started to walk. They didn't sound exactly the same as they had before. 
I was straining my ears trying to find out why they sounded so differently. When I realized what it was my heart froze with complete terror. These footsteps were now behind me on the trail. I stopped and spun around before thinking. There behind me was something nightmares are made of. About 15 feet away from me this creature that had stopped too. It stood there in the middle of the dark trail looking at me. I couldn't make out much detail because it was dark, so I assumed the hair was black. It looked to be about 8 foot tall and about 4 feet from shoulder to shoulder. Out of reflex, I let out an involuntary scream. When I screamed this thing tilted its head to the side much like a dog will do when it hears something it doesn't understand. I began to slowly back away from it. After just a few steps it let out a grunt that sounded like a huge ape. It was a deep throaty sound. It took a step toward me and I let out another scream, then threw the bag at it. I turned and ran for home as hard as I could run. I didn't slow down until I reached the back porch. When I went inside it was pretty much like I had described. There is no way they would have ever heard me screaming. I went to my bedroom and sat down on the bed. My mind was still trying to sort out what had just happened. What had I seen? Just thinking about it again gave me the creeps. I would never be able to walk those woods in the dark again. I may not be able to walk them in daylight. Where had this thing come from? Has it always lived here? I had so many questions. I wanted to talk to my brothers about it, but I knew they would never believe me and would tease me relentlessly. I fell asleep that night thinking about the way it had tilted its head when I screamed. The next morning I waited around the house until my mom drove into town, and I got her to drop me off at the lake. My brothers were getting ready to go swimming. They both asked what had happened to me last night. I didn't know why they were asking me this, and I was curious as to how much they knew so I responded, nothing, why? Then they proceeded to tell me that one of them got hit with my fast food bag last night while sitting by the fire. Naturally, they assumed it was me teasing them. And the other one kept hearing me scream really late last night. How could they have heard me scream late at night when I made it home pretty early? I knew I couldn't tell them what happened but I really wanted to. They said their friends told them that the screams were coming from a Bigfoot. A few of them got scared and went home. I laughed right along with my brothers. How silly to think there was a Bigfoot in these woods. H.H. Possible aggressive Bigfoot in Armstrong County, Pennsylvania. I was fishing at Cadogan on the Allegheny River in western Pennsylvania. I parked at the top of the ramp going down to the river. It's not a boat ramp, just one for backing four-wheel drives down to the water. It's getting to be just about twilight when I hear something moving down the hillside across from us. It's steep, but not too steep. I hear it barreling down the hillside, but the brush is thick and really high. Better part of 12 feet. I'm waiting for a black bear to hop onto the road, but it doesn't. It just stops in the middle of the last brush right beside the road. Thinking it was still a bear I usher my friend and his four-year-old daughter down to the river. There are a bunch of rocks there, a variety of sizes. I'm still at my car, less than 5 feet from my door, and this brush is a good 30 feet away. So I know I can make it to my car and distract it with my horn and engine. And yet it never leaves the brush. Just shakes it violently. I stand there about 5 minutes, and I can see it make its way up the hill. I didn't realize it was pushing the small trees around it. I wasn't connecting anything because of my adrenaline was high. I never saw it and it was too dark by that point. I walk back down to the river and we're gathering up our stuff. It's getting way too creepy. We're packing up and I can hear a knocking sound coming from the hillside. I can see a group of people down river from us, but they aren't near any trees. They're actually on an outcrop and about 20 feet away from the tree line. This knocking is above us and slightly upriver. And even they had reacted to it, looking around and not knowing what's making the sound. I yell to them about possibly being a bear. They said they heard something coming down the hillside and seen my buddy running towards the water. They thanked us for the heads up. As soon as they thanked us a rock came flying off the hillside in between us and them. We actually saw the rock hit the water. They jumped as I did. We really weren't expecting it. I turned around to see if my friend was up on the hill and was messing with us. As I turned he was just a few feet behind me holding his daughter, and both were white as a ghost. I decided to reach down and grab a rock to carry with me, just in case it got real. 
Three more times we heard these rocks hitting the water, and I just had enough. Our site was all cleaned up, and I took it as a perfect time to retaliate, not my best decision. But I knew where they were being thrown from. That damn brush up there. So I chucked it. I knew there wasn't any trees around, and I figured if I threw it, it would probably just blow right through it. But it didn't. It made a sound like someone who was beating their chest. And it rolled back out towards me. I actually heard whatever I hit to get the wind knocked out of it, and it hit the hillside. It takes off down the road towards the other group. They start screaming, utter terror screams and start throwing whatever they could grab at it. I'm just standing there bewildered and watching them scatter. Few of them went into the water and the rest ran towards me. All of a sudden someone yells get in the truck. They took off to their truck. They literally left everything, nobody grabbed anything and they took off. I'll never forget their screams. I ran back up the hill and hopped in my car. My buddy ran up with his daughter right after they started shouting. He was crying and I've known this man for 20 years. I can count on one hand how many times I have seen him cry. I start up my car and we hightailed it out of there. Never seen what it was but I put everything together later that night. It's been 5 years since it happened and he absolutely refuses to go down there. Damn shame too because it's an amazing catfish spot. R. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.